try again, then you fail again. And after a certain period of time, you hit the right target or you get <coughs> It doesn't happen that you are aiming to something and it goes on, you know, in one shot. My thoughts for you guys are that you should define the meaning of success in your own terms. You know, there are a lot of people who have talked about what is success to them or what the success means to them. And there are various uh, books and everything written about it. You know, what is to be successful? You can win. <coughs> Right? Everyone must have heard about that book. But I would suggest that whatever the society defines success for you, don't go with that. Define your goals, define what is success for you. That is really important. And if you can do it early in your life, mind you, you'll be really happy with it. So this is German word called Selbstständisch. Okay, this is pronounced as Selbstständisch, which means in Germany to be self-employed. Right, so there's a difference between an entrepreneur and a person who is self-employed. So self-employed is like a sailor. sailor. You know, he has to worry about a lot of things, about giving the direction to the boat and all, about the, if it's a, you know, wind-powered boat, then you have to take care of the sails. If it is petrol or, you know, chemical power, you have to take care of that. A sailor is waiting for some things to happen in his life, you know. He is not kind of an optimist. Whereas when we compare him with a surfer, so entrepreneur is like a surfer, where he is quite optimist, you know, he falls down, he comes, gets back, he just does his work, you know, he adapts to the situation, if the waves rises up quite high, he makes sure that how he is going to utilize and optimize his wave to make sure that it reaches wherever he wants to go, using the power of the wave. Both the things are quite similar, I mean like you have to go somewhere, you are into something, but the kind of attitude the person has differentiates over here completely. It's very important not only to have an innovative idea, but also that this idea is in harmony with the entrepreneur's ability. You know, you will all be searching for that idea. We read in the newspapers, right? you know, Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook. What a wonderful idea. What do you think? Is the idea gate or the person Mark Zuckerberg who executed him at that idea is great, right? So it's always about the person's determination, you know, that's why patience, perseverance and persistence. The idea can be anything, I mean like, you know, talk about Ola, talk about Uber. They are kind of quite similar. But the people involved in executing that idea is really what that matters. So that's why when you are thinking about taking up some initiative in life, you want to do a startup, first think about what are the abilities required to execute it, what are the hardships which are going to come associated with that idea and are you ready to go for that and give it all what you have demystify creativity so creativity is thinking of new things right and innovation is doing new things right how do you relate with it yeah you can think a lot of things you know man can fly in the air right using his hand will it be real no. So something which you can think is, you know, you have thoughts, you can think about anything you want to do. But if it's not practical, it's not innovation. It will be called innovation when it comes in practicality. When you see that thing working. You need to declutter and focus on your idea development. And uh, there might be hundreds of ideas, maybe tens of ideas going around in your mind right now. But then you need to bring down those ideas to one or two. And then maybe try out those ideas. You, you cannot keep on thinking that these are the 10 ideas and you go in your grave with those 10 ideas without executing it. Right? So you need to bring down and you have to develop that idea and focus on certain ideas. So how we do it? Let's take a look at it. So first we need to understand what is a startup model. Right? Startup model is nothing but like, you know, when you go for research, you write thesis. And before you start your research, the first question is, what you ask? That is, why? Why you want to do this research? Why you want to do this startup? Why you want to work on that idea? What is the reason behind it? Okay? So, your why is your idea. Where comes the learning? And it's the hypothesis. You know, it's kind of an experiment. When you do a startup, you are not aware, you know, it's ambiguous whether it will succeed or not. So you have no clue what is going to happen next. So you take it as an experiment, right? So it's a hypothesis. Then comes how? So how do you build it? What are the things you require? How are you, what is the baseline? You know, what is the foundation? And that will be your product. 
not a complete product, maybe a MVP, that is a minimum viable product, a product which may look like the final product. Then comes what? Right? So what is that? How are you going to how are you going to measure it? How are you going to analyze that? And the analysis will happen obviously with the data. How many people like the product, just like the product, what is that they are expecting? So you refine the idea, you refine the product. You are working on the minimum viable product. Now the time comes where you have to figure out from where you can procure the raw material at more cheaper cost. From where you can have better suppliers, from where you can have better distributors. Right? How will you hire the team? Will you do some outsourcing? So which is the cheapest mode of operandi? So how the operation cost can be brought down or how you can reduce the wastage in the whole process. Everyone has seen the movie Padman. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So refining the idea, you know, whatever you are working on, how you closely bring it to the practicality. Be fearless to share your ideas. There are a lot of uh, institutions where I have been to give a talk like this. I interact with the students uh, after the session and they are like, you know what, so I uh, cannot share the idea with you. And they believe that I will take their idea and you know become millionaire and billionaire. That doesn't work actually in practicality because if the idea has come to you, it's you who are very much aware how to execute it. So the thing about sharing your ideas, be fearless, talk about it openly and don't fear that someone else will take this idea. You should be thankful to the guy who takes your idea and works with you because he will be your competitor and whenever there is competition, there is a sure demand for that kind of a product. Right? So it's not like you know only McDonald's sells the burgers in the world. There are hundreds and thousands of people who are selling burgers. Right? And most of the time you will find KFC, McD and various other people sitting adjacent to each other. Beware of experts at the early stage of idea development. You know, when you have this very naive idea, very you know, it has just come to you and you just discuss with some experts, you know, pros, and they, you know, kind of give you kind of a feedback where you feel demotivated, you know, because you have not studied the idea properly. You have not given time to that idea to make it so robust that you can pitch it properly. Coming to ideation aspects, what do you understand by ideation? How you approach ideation? You know, everyone has 10 different ideas, you know, where they have seen or they want to become an aggregator or they want to copy or maybe Ola. Everyone is trying to do something or the other. But how, what is the questions you need to ask before jumping into that zone and from 10 ideas bringing it to 1 to 2? Let's take a look at it one by one. So first question is, does your idea solve a lot of people's problems? If you're thinking the idea which you're working on is your problem, that this is the problem of your life, and then you approach it, you will not find many people having that same problem. You need to find an idea where more people are associating with it. Like when you go to a South Indian restaurant or any other South Indian restaurant around India or world, you will find same menu word and entry. Are you with me? Yes, sir. You will not find something which is the favorite of the hotelier who is running that restaurant. <coughs> because the food he is serving is for the people at large, like you and me. So the problem should be how many people you can reach with this kind of an idea? <laughs> Are you passionate about the idea? Are you really wanting to do it? You can wake up at 3, 4 p.m. and you can be, oh, let's discuss about it. You know, you don't get bogged down with that kind of a question. Are you ready to commit 5 to 10 years? <laughs> so in an Indian context, if you see any startup has taken 8 to 10 years to succeed. If you can sustain to 10 years, we can say that you are a success. Your story, Shraddha Sharma, it's 10 years. You take about Flipkart, it's been almost like 10 years. So in Indian ecosystem, minimum 10 years is like kind of a, if you sustain, are other people doing something similar? So you have a competition already building into that zone. How many people think of that same idea? Because it's a healthy thing. I mean like if no one is thinking about that idea, then it's a problem. Right? Because the market will not be created. Are there too many competitors in space? Right? Again related to the previous question. Can I do something meaningful, different and better? So there is already Ola, there is already Uber. Can you be better than them with the same idea, with little bit of differentiation? Right? So there are already many businesses, can you mimic them and try to be much, little bit or much better than what they are providing to the public at large? Can you be ahead of them? 
Can I build a startup by my own capital resources? So no one will fund you directly. You know, I have an idea, I'm on one crore. <laughs> Initially, you need to invest some amount, some time and efforts into building your startup and creating that foundation. Can you have minimum viable product? MVP, that is, a, if you want to build a mobile, so something which looks like a mobile, if you can come up with and pitch it to an investor that this is what I exactly want to make and this will look like this at the end. So you don't make an iPhone and give it to him, but tell him that this is the structure how it, it will look like and these are the things which I want to put in. So investor and startup uh, founder relationship is like papa and son. So you show something, you get something in a very simple language. Are you equipped with skill set and background of business? What competitive advantage do you have over competitors? What is your USP? How you differentiate yourself? If I don't start this, someone else will. Is that the thing which comes up in your mind again and again? So probably you need to work on that idea and give it a try at least. How much of money you can invest and at the end, you know, if it goes for a toss and you are like, okay, fine, I give it a try. Is it fulfilling your purpose? What is your purpose in life? Does it match it? So various people who have been working on certain ideas have given their life into it. 10 years is a big time. You live for 60 years on an average. So in entrepreneurship, it's completely different from MBA. I mean, like an MBA, you are a manager who has given a set of things to do. You know, and the things are in places. You go there and you do the, you know, you play a role. In entrepreneurship, it's everything from scratch. You, know, you have to be an innovator first. You need to have an innovative or a creative idea. And you have to really dig down in yourself to come out with that idea which the world will see as a you know, billion dollar business, a million dollar business or a very big social enterprise in future. So, the first and foremost thing is to understand that entrepreneurship is different from uh, MBA. If MBA is entrepreneurship, everyone could have been an entrepreneur. Like every goddamn MBA student would have done a startup. It doesn't work that way. For entrepreneurship, you have to be creative. So, manager has to work in a, on the business and entrepreneur, not in the business. A manager will be part of the whole process. You know, he'll take care of the sub cheese time where everything is working fine, everything is going smooth, right? A reporting is happening. And entrepreneur will be an onlooker. Okay, and he will be working on the vision, a long term thing. He will not be associated with day to day activity. For a startup, obviously, you will give some time to it. But if you are completely consumed with the day to day activity of your startup, let me tell you, you will be consumed with that process and will not focus on the vision of the organization. One needs to understand the principles of division of labor. You know, we as a startup, uh, when we go for finding founders or co founders, you know. We make sure that he has everything. He has the world's, all the skills. Kind of a superman who can do everything for you. But that's not exactly the way, you know. Uh, you should think of it, the person who is good at it, make sure that person does only that task because that will bring more productivity. If you expect that person to learn a lot of things for you, in the process he will not be mastering anything. He will be in between somewhere. And which will hamper your productivity a lot. So make sure if a person is good at anything, make them do that task only. Get over fixation. You know, everyone who thinks of the first idea, thinks of it as the best thing to have happened to them. And uh, want to work on that again and again. I mean, like they don't let go. If the first idea didn't work, it doesn't go out of their mind. And they get bogged down because of it and they don't think of some other aspects or some other thing which might have really big potential. You know, it is said that in startup community, when you start working on an uh, idea, you get minimum three to four failures. And the third or the fourth one, the idea which you're working on might actually kick off. It's not always the first one, which might be a um, one night success. So it takes time. So you understand that you need to get over fixation. Adapt to society's values. The less we have, the more we value. You know, the society today, has so many problems, you know. We don't have industrial resources, we have pollution, we have water pollution, we have population crisis, we have climate change, right? Yesterday it was raining so heavily in the month of Feb. So a lot of things are happening and resources are the one thing which people will love. 
in the near future. You know, talk about water, talk about clean air to breathe. So, if your startup is working on something associated to adapting the societal values in your startup, and you're focusing on that, your startup has good chance that people will kind of associate with it. Most of the people who buy the products from startups don't actually have might not be the case they have seen the product but they know the story behind why the startup has taken the initiative and that's why they go and buy that product right and that's how the psychology of human mind works so if you ask me which startups will be successful and if you see me as an astrologer so there is a guy called Conrad Teff who has given already an outline of the startups who are going to rule the 21st century and beyond for next 20, 25 odd years. <coughs> so the first cycle you can see over here, the second cycle, third cycle, fourth, fifth. And the sixth cycle which has already taken a boom and already started is biotech, health and DNA. So any startup which is going to work in these three fields for the next 25 to 30 years is going to boom like anything. The reason being the previous cycles if you see is IT. You know people are tired, people have crisis, people have back pains, people have sore eyes, people have health issues sitting in front of the computer. And these are the same people who are going to get old in the next 5 to 10 years. So these are the people who are going to need health checkups, who are going to face health crisis. People who will be thinking of maybe DNA sampling and working on that as well as some biotech products which will help them to sustain in their life. So Kondratev has pitched this idea that every 20 years there comes a cycle which rules the world. So IT was for last 20 years. Are you with me? Right? So next 20 years is going to be about health, DNA and biotech. Ideas don't matter, the execution does finally. I mean like it's a person who comes and executes and takes that initiative, no, whatever may be, I will execute it. You are a fool until your idea is a success. That process will go keep on going. So you have to sustain with it, you have to understand and try to live with it. Right? So if you are ready to do it, then your chances of sustaining in your journey is easy. So what are the teachings for social entrepreneurs from entrepreneurship? I mean like social entrepreneurship is not new in India, right? <coughs> yes or no? Right, social entrepreneurship is nothing new in India, I mean, like it's been going on for ages. Today we have this terminology like social entrepreneurship. But what do we understand by it? To be independent and self-sustainable. For social enterprise, the biggest question is sustainability. Right? Because here we don't talk about profits, here we don't talk about huge margins. Here we are just talking about sustenance of the NGO or a startup which is working on a social cause. Social entrepreneurship is not collection of donations and spending it for good causes. You know, a lot of people think that let's open a social enterprise. We'll collect funds and we'll donate biscuits to dogs. Or we'll collect funds and we'll open a pet house. So that's not exactly how, you know, social enterprise is. The kind of the structure people have in their mind that, you know, People have to donate a lot of funds and then we'll do a donation drive and something like that. This is beyond that. Today's generation, I mean like the whole 21st century is so greedy about certain things. So we're greedy for petrol, we're greedy for various natural resources and these are depleting. So we need to keep a check on it, right? And social enterprise can do that, right? A social enterprise has the capability to do it if the government cannot do it, right? So if the government is neglecting certain things, a social enterprise has to be the face of that community who comes up and speaks about it. The problems to solve for 21st century, I already discussed some of them as climate change, population and all. So these are just to name a few, you can associate and think about the problems in these areas and try to build your startup which will be associated with this. Right? If you are thinking about a social enterprise. The situation of China right now will be facing that in the next 10-15 years. Japan has grown completely old. They are expecting 2 lakh Indian engineers to come and work in Japan. Now that situation is going to come in India by 2030. <laughs> by that time all the Indians who are in the majority youth you know, uh, age group will be old. So at that time what will be the crisis? So if you can visualize that and if you start building something for that right now, 
it will take some time but you will be a surely success and end of one and that one. Holy. Next time. Holy is nothing but um, you are aware about WhatsApp, right? Yeah. How many people work in WhatsApp? Anyone? <laughs> yes? 20 50, 50. There were 50 people working in WhatsApp when it was sold for 19 million dollars. Right. So only 15, 50 people for a business worth rupees 19 billion dollars. So this is about a business startup. Let's talk about a social startup which can be lean with very few people. How you can work and sustain. For an example, this tea campaign, the same startup which I talked about or the business or the social enterprise from Germany. The room is they were operating to import the tea, uh, the tea from Assam. Is the same room they have even today after 25 odd years, 20, 25 odd years. And they are operating from the same place without investing much on other infras and all. You are getting that point? Being so huge even today, I mean, like their turnover is in you know, millions of dollars. But keeping those infras and everything at no cost, at zero cost. So it's not about being, you know, huge. For social enterprise, what is that you can do in very minimum is really, really important. Because the question is of sustenance. You're not going to add profit next year with whatever you earn. So it's a very slow process. We need entrepreneurs who bring a childlike curiousness, humor and perseverance, you know. You really need to be like a child who is ready to not give up. You know, he'll keep on trying again, he'll keep on nagging again. He, if he wants to climb somewhere, he will fall. If he falls on his own, he will not cry. If you make him, if you push him and he falls on, even from, you know, 10 inches, he will start crying as if he has fallen from 10th floor. But a child who is, who is trying to climb somewhere and he falls down on his own, he will not cry. So are you like that child? Can you be child? Forever. <coughs> For an entrepreneur, it's really, really important to be like that and have that kind of a mindset. So if you fall down, no worries. You will climb again. So you need to make that mindset. You need to bring that attitude. Any startup has two functions today. Marketing and innovation. Yeah, can you tell me a good social enterprise which is helping hospitalized patients today in India? Anyone startup? Which was started like three, four years back. Anyone has heard about Keto? Keto? K E W T O? Keto is started by Kunal Kapoor. Kunal Kapoor, the Rangde Basanti actor. <coughs> now you get it? Yeah, so Keto is basically a social enterprise, right? It helps to raise funds for the people who are hospitalized for their operations. And you might see, you might have seen that in the feed of your Facebook and all, where they show the videos of people who are suffering ailments. So, what has brought them, the world has brought everything into these two contexts, you know, the marketing and the product innovation. If you have these two in alignment, nothing is going to stop you from succeeding in 21st century. Right? You need not worry about other stuff. Next time. So coming to the end of my session, this is the last topic which I will be discussing. Art of zero budgeting. <coughs> Have you heard this term? Anyone? No? So art of zero budgeting, what comes to your mind? <coughs> when you say this word, art of zero budgeting, what comes to your mind? Yeah. When you start doing start up with zero capital. Ah, uh, okay. Or zero funding. Might be. My first startup was like that. It was a business enterprise. We started with zero investment from our parent. We didn't take any money. But this is not related <coughs> to it. And I will not ask anyone to do that. <laughs> Doesn't make sense at all and it's worthless. Waste of time. Yeah. No profit, no loss. No profit, no loss. Okay. Yeah. So what do you call no profit, no loss, guys? Yeah? Non profit? No, no profit, no loss. NGOs make profit. They don't take it. I mean like you make profit but you take it, don't take it home. That is NGO. Yeah, anyone else? Break even. Break even. What do you call when you don't have to pay anything and 
you you know the other guy also doesn't have to pay anything and you just exchange them. Yeah. Can we clap for him? So barter, you know, bartering is a thing which NGOs should really focus on. You know, because you don't have money, one thing which you have might be the skills, you have the resources which you can barter, right? And through this bartering, um, for my various social activities and enterprises, I have featured in various media, I mean, like maybe news, newspapers, news channels, without giving any money to the media people. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So with the art of zero budget, that means you think that you have zero money and you have to execute something. So what is that goes through your mind that this is what I want to do but I have zero money <laughs> and how do I achieve it? So if you want to advertise something about your NGO in the news, but you have zero money, you don't have any money at all. I mean, like you don't have a, you have you don't have money to hire someone as an assistant or someone to work with you. Where will you fetch and give like fifty thousand or one lakh rupees for a newspaper article or an ad? Does it make sense? So that's where zero art of zero budgeting comes into picture. Where you collaborate with media houses, <laughs> where you work with them as a partner and the deal is in partner you don't pay anything to them they don't pay you. media will never pay you you know not even in dreams but how you make the most out of that opportunity where at least you make sure that something comes in the media which is worth a while to some of this session i would like to tell you about dr kalam and how he was and who actually you know made him who he was and these are the three gentlemen, sometimes we try to kind of neglect them, who Dr. Kalam, you know, always termed as mentors. The first one is space explorer, Professor Satish Dhawan, then his Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, and then his Dr. V.S. Arunachalam. So if you want to send a rocket in space, you need to know three things, right? You need to know how space works. You need to understand the physics. And you need to understand what kind of material will store in space. If you know all these three things and you mix the knowledge for that, you can build the best rocket in the world. Isn't it? Right? So, can you find such mentors in your life, early in stage, where you can gain some insights from them and start building your rocket, your startup, your idea of the future. And uh, Dr. Kalam has given this line, right? Learning gives creativity. Creativity leads to thinking. Thinking provides knowledge and knowledge makes us Great. So it's a very incredible line, you know, and I, I keep thinking about it again and again. And every time I go through this line, there is something new which comes up. It has so much of meaning in those four sentences. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. You may fall. You may fall. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Keep walking. Keep walking. They will stop you. They will stop you. Won't they? Won't they? Just keep walking. Just keep walking. Did you reach your goal? Did you reach your goal? No. no. Keep walking. Keep walking. When people leave you, when people leave you. Keep, walking. keep walking. Everything will make sense. Will make sense. Keep, walking. keep walking. If you think your path is lost, you path is lost. remember you have just created one. Thank you so much, guys.